pertaining to the Bible. When the Bible talks about being perfect, when the Bible talks about being, uh, having peace, the Bible is saying, listen to this, every area of your life has been brought to completeness. Every area, uh, listen, listen to me, every citizen of Zion, their life has been brought to perfection, completion. You're made whole. That's what it means to be made whole. But the Bible says that the woman who had the issue of blood was made whole. He's not just talking about her healing. He's talking about her finances too. Every issue of her life was made whole because she had spent all her money. But when she touched Jesus, everything was made whole. Yes. Jesus brings every level of my life to the full. Every, listen to me. Every area. You're not blessed in one spot and broken over here. No. He brings every area to the full. To the full. But you have to walk in there. Yes, sir. Take your shoes off. All right. The ground that you're walking on is holy ground. Yes. You walk on holy ground. Yes. Every step you take is holy. Yes. When you walk on the job, the yes. job is sanctified ah, holy. Because everywhere you go yes. is holy ground. Yes. When you walk into public, you don't have to be afraid of no virus. Because everywhere you go, you sanctify that place holy. Because you are in Zion. And Zion is a part of you. You have come to the city. Yes. Amen. My Lord. Amen. You come to the city. You're not looking for the city. You have come. It was a spiritual transformation. It was a spiritual relocation. It was a spiritual drop off. He dropped you in Zion. That's right. And now the ground that you go, you take Zion with you now. All right. You take it with you now. All right. Okay, come on. I'll read that. And to, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood sprinkling, that speaketh better than that of Abel. Okay, Abel made a sacrifice of blood. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about the death of Abel. It's talking about the sacrifice that he made. It's talking about the sacrifice that he made. Abel made a blood sacrifice to appease or to please God. When the Bible talks about the, street, the, um, the sacrifice of his blood, it's not talking about his death. It's talking about the blood sacrifice that he made. That uh, He made a blood sacrifice and Cain did not. And so Cain was refused, but God received Abel. But the Bible says, even though God received what Abel did, he says the blood offered that you, you have come with, he says it's greater than that. It's greater than that. Because Jesus was the one who offered that blood sacrifice. Now, so he says, what you have come to is greater than what Cain offered. Then he says uh, that you have come, that, or that you have received mercy. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that the next thing? It's to see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh heaven. Okay, there's a part of it that talks about the mercy. Let me, let me skip over that. I got to get that to him. All right, let me see here. It says, uh, But ye have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heaven of Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Your name is written in heaven. And to, the and to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect. Uh, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of the sprinkler that speaketh better things than Abel. Uh, where it talks about you have come, you have we have obtained mercy. Oh, that's from the Amplified Bible. Verse number 24 from the Amplified Bible says, and to Jesus, the mediator, go between agent of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy. That speaks of mercy. The blood of Jesus that speaks of mercy. That's what I want to touch on before we move on. The blood of Jesus that speaks of mercy. The one, there's another scripture in the Bible that says, we are those who have obtained mercy. You have obtained mercy. You're not trying to get mercy. You have obtained it. When you obtain 
means something, it means you have it in your possession. Yeah. You have mercy. You don't have to look for mercy. You have obtained mercy. You have the kindness of God. God has already smiled on you. Do you know how powerful that is to understand that I have obtained the mercy of God? That God is pleased with me. That God has smiled on me. That God is leading in my direction. That the favor of God is upon my life. That the kindness of God is with me. The power of God, the wisdom of God, the strength of God is with me. God has smiled. He has looked on me and he is well pleased with me. I have obtained mercy. Amen. I'm not working to get mercy. I have this mercy. I'm not He has smiled on me. He has smiled on me. He has looked at me and he has smiled. I have obtained this mercy. This is the land that we live in. The city of the firstborn. The, the city of just men made perfect. God has made you perfect. Amen. No failure, no error, no wrong. God has made you perfect. Yes. You are born not of flesh and blood, but of his spirit. Yes. You have been made perfect by God. You are the very perfection of God. Mm -hmm. You are the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. You are the glory of the unseen king. Mm -hmm. You are the glory. You are, the Bible says, you are the workmanship of God. You are the workmanship. You are what he has designed. You are what he created. You are what he was talking about when he was talking about what he was going to make and how awesome it was going to be and how wonderful it was going to be. You are what he had in mind. You are the glory of the God. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Praise God. You are my workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Yes. All of this was about you. Yes. Uh, I did all of this for you. Yes. 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 Cause Christ 
lives in me. Yes, sir. Oh, One more thing I want to give you before we go. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. No, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Yes, go down to um, verse 19. I mean, verse 9. Verse 9. Yes, but, 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 but listen. Let me, um, let me show you. I'm, I'm going to get you on the seat. Let's see. I need some volunteers here. Come on. Yeah, come on, come on. Have a, have a seat at the table. Sit right there, sit right there. I'm gonna come take a picture. Listen, you invited me over. Now, 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 listen, now, listen to this. I represent Jesus. This table is the work that God is rotting or working in me. This table, listen. Jesus has prepared a table for every Christian. Come on. Matter of fact, we can even say for every person. Yeah, that's right. But only those who will receive Christ is able to come and sit at the table. Yes. Amen. Now, you come to the table, like, think about Thanksgiving. When you come to the table, and you got all kinds of stuff at this table. Yes, sir. You got three, four different kind of meats. Yeah. You got all kinds of sides, all kinds of breads, all kinds of desserts. You got sweet potato pie, you got peach cobbler, you got all kinds of stuff. You got way more food than one meal. Yes, you got options. You got a variety of good stuff that you can have. And when you come to the table, everything at the table has been prepared with you in mind. My Lord. Everything at the table. You did none of the work, but you get all the pleasure. All right. And everything here you have access to, to the degree that it was made for you. Yes. You don't have to beg for this. It was made for you. You don't beg for healing. Healing belongs to you. It was made for you. Yes. Prosperity was made for you. Peace was made for you. Joy was made to, for you. All you got to do is come to the table and sit down. Yes. He that believes enters into the rest. Yes. Amen. Now listen to what the scripture said. Verse number nine. Verse number nine says, yeah. God is faithful. God is faithful. By whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. Yeah. You can trust God. Right? Yes. You can Hallelujah. count on God. God ain't going to change his mind about Jesus. you. Just because you, just cause the situation look rough, God, God did not change his mind. Just because you're going through a hard time, God did not change his mind. Uh -huh. Just because it seems like it don't work, it's not working out, God did not yeah. change his mind. God is faithful, Antonio. Wipe the tears from your eyes and push forward because God is faithful. If you don't get weary and well doing, it's going to change. Yeah. If you don't get weary and well doing, it's going to turn around. Work the principle. Work the principle of the word of God. If you don't quit, you go going to win. Yeah. God is faithful.
Come on. He called you by your name. Yes. Remember I told y'all that last week when God calls you by your name? He didn't say everybody. He said Robin. Robin, come in here. He came to find Robin. He came to find Antonio. Come on in here, son. Come on in here and sit down at the table. He called you by your name. Everybody who was doing what you did did not come in, but you came in because he called you. Okay. He said God is faithful who has called you, summons you. What did he summons me? Y'all got to catch this. You got to catch this right here. He has called me. He has summons me into the fellowship. Yes, sir. Into the fellowship of his son. Okay. God has called us, the Christian, into the fellowship of his son. Let's look at that. This fellowship of the Son. Come on, y'all, pull your tape, pull, pull your seat in. Yes, sir. God has Oops. called us into the fellowship of His sons. See, everybody who's at this table is going to eat good. Yes, sir. Nobody at this table is going to be hungry. Nobody at this table is going to be sick. Nobody at this table is going to be broken. Nobody mirror and look at the mirror of the world. 